Hi and welcome back. Previously we have talked about the autograd system and computational graphs. In this tutorial we will talk about logistic regression and how you can use it in PyTorch. I have already imported NumPy, Matplotlib and Torch as my libraries for this tutorial. So if you're not familiar with logistic regression, it is similar to linear regression, just instead of predicting something continuous like a size, we are predicting whether something is true or false. By looking at this simple example, in this image we have a cat and if we pass in this image into our logistic regression model, it should give us a output of 0 or 1, depending if a cat is present on an image. So here we should get an output that is 1. Before we go any further, let's take a look at this computational graph for the logistic regression. Here we have two features, x1 and x2, and we have two corresponding weights, weight 1, weight 2, and we have one bias. We pass these values into this uh, lo logistic regression equation, which is just multiplying each feature with its corresponding weight, and at the end we add the bias, and we get a value for z. After this, we pass the, this z value into a activation function. The goal of this activation function will be to squeeze numbers to be in a range from 0 to 1. So for that purpose we will be using the sigmoid function. In the x-axis we can see the z and this is the equation for the sigmoid function. So as z decreases we can see that the output of the sigmoid function will be some number close to 0. But as z increases then the, the output is a number close to 1. Also, if you look here in the middle, when the number is around 0, then the output of the sigmoid function is a number that is around 0 0.5. Now that we know what the sigmoid function does, we will go back to our computational graph. We will apply the sigmoid function to the z that we got from the logistic regression formula. And we get a y hat, which is a prediction. So this number is ranging from 0 to 1. After we get this number, we will pass it in into the loss function. Until now we have used the mean squared error function, but now that our values are ranging from 0 to 1, we will be using the loss function that is called binary cross entropy. This is the formula for calculating the binary cross entropy or the loss, and we will make an example. For example, we will take y to be a number 1 or the first class, and y hat is the prediction value and it is, for example, close to 1. So the loss will be a number that is close to 0 or the loss is small. But, for example, y is equal to 1 and the prediction is a number that is close to 0, the loss will be big and this loss will tell us that our model made a wrong classification. Now we will jump to the coding part and see how we can do all of this in Python. For this example, I have defined an array x that consists of 6 vectors and if we plot these vectors or scatter them, so every 0 and every first index, we can see that we can separate these points into two cl classes by drawing a line here. So how can we draw this line? Well, we will create x1 to be numbers between minus 3 and 3, 50 numbers and x2 will be minus 1 multiplied with x1 plus 1. After defining this, we will copy this scatter and we will just plot out x1 and x2 that we got here. And we can see that we have drawn a line that separates these points. And we can all agree that all points that are below this line should belong to the zeroth class, this class here, and all the points that are above this line should belong to the first class or the class up here. And by looking at this example we can see that the main goal of the logistic regression is to separate a set of points or a set of numbers into two classes. But this line was chosen by hand for this example and this is not good practice. So we will now see how we can implement this in PyTorch. We will start by importing from sklearn.datasets we will import make blobs. This function will help us to randomly generate two blobs that we will we'll use for the classification. We define x and y by calling the function make blobs. We pass in a parameter number of samples, which will be a list. We pass in two numbers, 
So this will just tell uh, the function to create two blobs that will have 200 data points in each of them. Then we pass in cluster std to be 1.4. So we don't want our data to be completely separated. We want some kind of overlapping. And also we will set the random state to be 2. After we have created our x and y, the type of x is a numpy array. So we need to change it to be a tensor. So x torch will be equal to torch dot from numpy and we simply pass in x and we change the type to be torch dot float tensor. Big F here and we paste it down here and we just change it so this is y torch and y and we also need to reshape it so it's of shape minus one and one now that we have transformed our data we can print it out so we get a better understanding of how the data looks like so we'll print out x torch and we can see that this is a tensor of vectors and each vector has two numbers in it now if we print out y torch we will also get a tensor, but here the numbers are either 0 or 1. The number 0 represents that it belongs to the class 0 and 1 that it belongs to the class 1. Now that we have a better understanding of the data, let's scatter it so we can visualize it. So we will scatter x, 0th index, x, 1st index and the color will be y depending on the class. So we can see that there are two classes, the first class and the second class. And now comes the part where we define our logistic model. So we'll create a class, logistic regression, and as usual we pass in torch.nn.module, we tell it that this is a torch class, or a torch module, and then we define a init function self, super logistic regression self and we call in it and then here we will define a layer so a linear layer and it will be the same as in the linear regression so torch.nn.linear the only difference here is that we have x that is a vector of two numbers so we will pass in that it has two features and we want one output and then we define the forward function, so forward self, and it will accept x as the input. It will make a prediction, so y hat, and we'll call the self.linear on that x point. And then after this, we will just return, remember that our data needs to be in the range from zero to one, and for that purpose, we use the sigmoid activation function. So to call the function, we'll use torch.sigmoid, and just pass in y hat. And now that we have defined our logistic regression model, we will call it, so model will be equal to the logistic regression. And now we define a optimizer. So optimizer will be equal to torch.optim. We will use the stochastic gradient descent. And what do we want to optimize? We want to optimize the model.parameters and we will set a learning rate of 0.01. We also need to define a loss function, so we will name it criterion, and we will use torch.nn. We mentioned earlier we will use the binary cross entropy, so BCE loss. After all those definitions, we can start training our model. So we will create a for loop for epoch in range of 5000 for this example. I have chosen this number myself, randomly. You can experiment with it and change it yourself. And then we'll, we need to do a forward, forward pass. So y hat will be equal to the model. And we pass in x storage. And again, after the forward pass, we do the calculation of the loss. So loss will be equal to criterion. Pass in y hat. And y torch. So the predicted value and the original value. And then we just do the backward pass, so loss.backward. And we optimize the parameters by doing optimizer.step. And don't forget, we need to zero the gradient so they don't accumulate. So optimizer.zero underscore grad. 
and then after run, running this piece of code I have made an error here just delete this after running this piece of code we will train our model for 5000 iterations and after the model is trained we want to access the model parameters for example so we will create a for loop name parameter in model dot named parameters and we'll simply print out the, the name and the parameter and here we can see the weight so it has two values or two weights 0 0.6412 and 0 0.7574 and it has one bias which is equal to 3.5931 and now comes the big question how can we use these numbers or the weight and the bias to make some predictions. Well, we will create a variable y prediction and we will simply use model dot forward. So we will do a forward pass on xtorch. So we'll make some predictions on xtorch. Then we will simply print out y prediction and we'll print out the first 10 numbers for better visualization. By looking at these numbers, we can see that they are in the range of 0 to 1 but we want them to be either 0 or 1, either the 0th class or the 1st class. How can we do that? The easiest way to achieve this is by using a function called np.where and by passing in y prediction bigger than 0 0.5 we will set it to be 1, if it is lower than 0 0.5 we will set it to be 0. And then if we print out y prediction, the first 10 elements, we will see that numbers that are below 0 0.5 are set to 0 and those bigger than 0 0.5 are set to be 1. And now one way to visualize the model's performance is by scattering these points. So xtorch with 0th index, xtorch first index. And these are the original points and now to label them we will pass in the color to be either 0 or 1 from our y prediction, so y prediction. And now we can see that these are separated from each other, so this is one class and this is the second class. This is a nice way to visualize how the model classified the data, but a much better way to visualize is how the model is performing over time, so we can plot the loss for that. We will create a list, all loss, and inside the training loop we will append to that list the loss.item. We will reset the weights by running this piece of code and then training again. And after the training we will just plot all loss. And here we can see how the loss was dropping from 2, it dropped to 0 0.5 and then it gradually dropped until it reached somewhere around 0 0.1. And now we can ask ourselves, what if we pump this number up, the number of iterations? I will rerun this piece of code and instead of 5000 I will set it to be 10,000. And then we will plot it again and we can see that the loss was dropping even more and it reached somewhere near zero. Now that you know how to train a model you can experiment by changing the number of iterations and even changing the number of points here. Now I have to mention that here we only used one data set for the training and the testing and that is not a good approach. In practice you will usually have two data sets, one for the training and one for the testing. And that would be all for this tutorial. If you want to learn more about the logistic regression I will leave a link down in the description for the blog post and also I will leave a link for the code. Thank you for watching, if you like the video drop a like and subscribe to our channel and see you in the next one, be safe.